1953, lung cancer became the most common cause of cancer deaths in men. And by 1985, it became one of the leading causes of cancer deaths in women, and now results in approximately 50% more deaths than breast cancer. Even in 2020, it was estimated that 1.8 million people are still dying of lung cancer. And we actually have a body in this lab that died from this type of cancer. And we're definitely gonna show you what this body looks like. But why are these statistics about lung cancer so alarming? Well, because 90% of all lung cancer deaths are avoidable. Because 90% of lung cancer deaths can be attributed to smoking. So today, we're gonna to show you what healthy lungs look like versus smoker's lungs, talk about what type of smoking is worse, like cigarettes versus cigars versus marijuana versus vaping, as well as discuss all of the other negative health consequences that have to do with smoking. Like smoking can affect a lot more than just your lungs. It can affect your bones, your eyes, and even your reproductive organs, to name a few. For those of you that are new to the channel, welcome to the lab. I'm Jonathan Benyon with the Institute of Human Anatomy, and we're about to jump into some anatomical awesomeness. Now, when students come into an anatomy or a cadaver lab, there are a lot of organs that they like to hold and touch. Most like to hold the brain and to hold the heart, but when you show students a lung, you just start noticing fingers venturing into this area because they just can't stop themselves from poking this gushy, elastic lung tissue. And then almost always, the next question follows. Are these smoker's lungs? And actually, most of the lungs that we have in our lab are relatively healthy. These particular lungs fall into this category of being relatively healthy, but what makes students think they might be smoker's lungs are all these dark purplish lines and spots that you can see scattered throughout the lung tissue. However, these darkish purplish lines are actually just vascular markings from all the blood vessels that run through the lung tissue. Lungs have to be extremely vascular, or in other words, have a lot of blood vessels because we are trying to exchange as much carbon dioxide and oxygen with the bloodstream as possible. And so again, lungs are densely packed with these blood vessels. And another indicator of these lungs being healthy is they've maintained their pinkish color. And again, that maintaining that gushy elastic nature is a good thing as well. But those blood vessels will eventually get smaller and smaller and become capillaries that surround the alveoli of the lungs that look like these grape-like clusters that serve as the main site of gas exchange between the air and the blood. But over here, we have the smoker's lungs, which as you can see, especially with this lobe, it's black and not nearly as elastic and gushy as the healthy lungs. And like I said, this body did die of lung cancer. Now, I can't actually guarantee this next part because I haven't cut into these other lobes. And even though we do get much of the medical history of each of the bodies in the lab, they didn't specify the exact type of lung cancer and if the other lobes, besides this black, gnarly looking lobe were affected. But I can feel some nodules and even what feels like a mass in this lobe right here that could possibly be additional cancerous lesions. But the limited medical history that we did receive did mention a history of long-term smoking with this person also having COPD, which stands for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So a lot going on with these lungs here. But let's get into this discussion about smoking. As I mentioned in the intro, the majority of lung cancers are the result of smoking. And I'm sure this isn't the first time that you've heard that smoking is bad and is the greatest risk factor when it comes to developing lung cancer. But what type of smoking is the worst? Because they're smoking from cigarettes, pipes, cigars, smoking marijuana, and even vaping. Well, smoking tobacco products, primarily cigarettes, is the worst and accounts for about 90% of all lung cancer cases. And this risk increases with the number of cigarettes smoked per day and the duration of smoking. Now, secondhand smoke exposure also increases lung cancer risk. However, the intensity of exposure is typically far less than that which occurs with active smoking. Cigar and pipe smoking are associated with an increased risk as well, although this is potentially lower than cigarettes. The risk for marijuana smoking is less clear when compared to cigarettes because many of the studies are limited by selection bias meaning the sample sizes or the number of people in the studies were small, and due to a failure to adjust for those people that were smoking cigarettes and marijuana versus those that were smoking marijuana alone. So was it the cigarettes, was it the marijuana, or a combination of the two? However, there are several reports that have shown histologic and molecular changes 
in the lung epithelial cells of marijuana smokers that were similar to the cellular changes seen in cigarette smokers prior to the cigarette smokers developing lung cancer. And so marijuana smoking probably does increase the risk of lung cancer. However, the magnitude of that risk has not yet been fully quantified. This also somewhat applies to vaping, as there are still many confounding variables, such as many patients that vape also smoke. Plus, compared to many of these other forms of smoking, vaping is still relatively new. And even though it does appear to be less damaging than cigarette smoke, we likely won't know all the long-term effects of vaping for years to come. But the take-home message is, yes, cigarette smoking appears to be the worst, but all of these forms of smoking are not good for your lungs and increase your risk of lung cancer to some degree. But the good news is stopping smoking can significantly decrease the risk of lung cancer, with those benefits becoming evident within five years of stopping. And even though former smokers still have a higher risk of developing lung cancer than those that have never smoked, former smokers who quit for over 15 years have an 80 to 90% risk reduction compared to current smokers. Now, I don't mean to get on too much of a soapbox here, but I don't encourage my patients to avoid or quit smoking just because of lung cancer. I mean, that's a big reason, but there are multiple reasons for one not to smoke that we're going to cover here, and I think many of these reasons will probably surprise you. And I do wanna say that I'm not trying to be all judgy pants with anyone that does smoke, it's just the reality is smoking is absolutely not good for your health. And again, this isn't just about your lungs. So let's get into these other negative health consequences. Cigarette smoking is estimated to be responsible for over 10% of cardiovascular related deaths because it can inflame the inside of your blood vessels, increase your risk of clotting, and negatively impact cholesterol. It also increases your risk for infections like the flu, the common cold, and even pneumonia. It can also increase your risk of type 2 diabetes, and this may be partly due to nicotine's effects on impaired insulin sensitivity. Osteoporosis and hip fractures become more of a problem with smoking as it can accelerate bone loss because it reduces blood flow to the bones, nicotine can hinder the production of bone building cells called osteoblasts, and it can also decrease the absorption of calcium. Now, many people have heard that smoking while pregnant can cause complications with the pregnancy, which is definitely true, but it is also associated with other reproductive problems such as premature menopause, infertility in both males and females, as well as erectile dysfunction. Those poor corpora cavernosa. And if you don't get that joke, that's okay. Please just refer to our video on how erections work. Smoking also increases the risk of ulcers, periodontal or gum disease, and even affects the eyes with an increased risk of macular degeneration and the development of cataracts. Pretty much up to half the people that smoke can be expected to die from a tobacco-related illness. Now, I do feel that we need to address the outliers, meaning you've probably heard someone say, well, so-and-so smoked cigarettes every day for nearly their entire life and lived to be 100. Well, so-and-so is exactly what was just mentioned, an outlier. Someone like this survives that long in spite of smoking, not because the smoking gave them some superpower to live longer, but because they had some extra luck. They may have had something in their genetics to make them more resilient to developing lung cancer, and it doesn't mean that this person didn't have other multiple health conditions that they were being treated for and couldn't have had a higher quality of life if they would have quit. Because again, quitting all forms of smoking, especially cigarette smoking, can greatly bring someone's risk level down and improve one's overall health and quality of life. Because this amazing machine that we call the human body does have an incredible ability to heal if one quits prior to irreversible conditions developing. 